remember the idea of the Sin City movie being around back in the early 90s, but I never thought, I don't know, how could they ever adapt it? It would just become a regular movie. It wouldn't, wouldn't have the same feel. I started really looking at it as, instead of trying to turn it into a movie, which would be terrible, let's take cinema and try and make it into this book. Because the mediums really are very similar. These are just snapshots of, of movement. Of all the principles involved in this, I've been the most startled by how faithful it is to the original. The Sin City is this film noir landscape, and basically one of the things that's great about the way Frank writes, this was Frank's way to create a complete universe to go as hard and as harsh as he wanted to, all right? And, and make it be as ghoulishly funny and as, you know, gallows humor, cryptic funny. It's not just these stories and it's not just these characters and it's not just this city. There's an entire mythology about this entire piece. And I like the idea of creating your own mythology. I was, I was a hard sell. I've got a good life drawing the comic books and there's really no need to, to um, let anybody have my baby. And I held to that fine until this Rodriguez guy started bugging my attorney and then my editor and hunting me down like a wild dog. And essentially, I were seduced. Robert showed up at our first meeting. You know, he whipped open his laptop and he'd already done some test shots of how he wanted to photograph actors and you know, how to stage things that really look damn good. I don't want to make Robert Rodriguez's Sin City. I want to make Frank Miller's Sin City because I love that material so much. I mean, he said, how about I fly you to Texas? We'll just do a test in one day. He called it a test. Um, and, and uh, you know, we'll see how it works out. He said, the worst possible thing is we'll end up with a cool little short film and, you know, part ways. Um, and, you know, maybe you'll agree to do this. And I, I thought, what are you going to do in a day? I'd been on movie sets. In a day, you, you, know, you, you have somebody fill a coffee cup. And in 10 hours, he shot an entire three-page short story of mine. This so-called test happened to include two very accomplished actors and be a completely polished piece of work that's going to be in the movie. I let her hear my footsteps. She only goes stiff for a moment. Robert just basically came to me and said, I'm doing this graphic novel, putting it and making it into a movie. I don't have the rights to it, and uh, I need somebody to come down and help me convince him to, like, let us go ahead with it. You're sick of running. You're ready to face what you have to face. But you don't want to face it alone. When I saw it, it just looked so amazing. It was just so great, and it was like true Frank Miller drawings. It's like, you know, it was the real Sin City uh, cityscape. And it became a great sales tool to take around to show all the other actors, because mm -hmm. we were moving so fast, to say, this is the book, and this is what we're going to do. In fact, here's the opening mm -hmm. into the credits. And we'd show mm -hmm. people like Bruce Willis, uh, the sequence. And it already had his name in the credits. I started watching it, and about a minute in, I, uh, I said, hang on a second. I hit pause. I said, uh, whatever else I see on this, I just want you to know that uh, I'm in. I want to do this. Action. Here we go. Back to the direction. And go. When we were casting all these parts, strange things started happening. People showed up who looked like my drawings. When we first see Hardigan, he's an honest cop, which is a rare thing in Sin City. He's, he's unsettled because there's one remaining thing that he hasn't taken care of. I play Nancy Callahan. She is an exotic dancer who was kidnapped when she was a kid. Maybe I should drive. Not a chance. Nobody but me can keep this heat running. If in her wildest dreams, her, her knight in shining armor ever comes back, she's ready for him. Blood for blood, find a gallon. Playing a guy named Marv. Mickey Rourke is just so beyond fantastic for this role. I'll be right out. It's almost like Frank Miller gave birth to him, all right? You know, he drew Marv and gave and, and created an actor who could play Marv. We sat and talked for about half an hour, and the only note I was able to write down was, met Mickey Rourke, he is Marv. When I was looking through the comic book, I didn't know which character he wanted me to do. 
Then I saw it was the character of Marv, and I got real excited because it was this far out looking cat that had some interesting things to say and do. And I thought, wow, this is going to be different and fun. And it's been a real hoot, you know, every day working. Shelly sort of links together all three stories. She's, uh, she's a waitress at the local watering hole. She's scared out of her mind, but um, trying at the same time to be an independent woman. Keep your hands to yourself or I'll cut your little back off. You looked at that and you went, that's some pretty powerful stuff, mister. That's, <laughs> that's straight out of your book, Frank. In the car, baby. We'll just talk. It'll be nice. Since that character who became a hero and then got lost in the glory of it, turned into a bully, you know, a self-centered madman, you know, with a license to kill. You're making a big mistake, man. A big mistake. You know, a perfect villain. And, uh, and he gets his due. I play Gail, who is comfortable walking around in thigh-high leather strap stilettos um, with an Uzi and handcuffs. And Frank's an insane man for drawing it. Dwight is he's violent, but um, he is a bit of a... He's got a bit of a soft spot for the girls. I forgot how quick you are. Great. Yeah, that was great. That was really great. Cool. Cut. Cut it. Cut, cut. Very good. Cut. <laughs> it was fascinating working with Quentin. Robert always talks about like three projects in advance, and at some point he mentioned it once, like just in passing. I didn't want to tell him what it was yet because I didn't have the rights to it yet. I wanted him to come down and, you know, shoot a short story for it so he could try out digital, so he could see how it is to work with actors in the digital realm. and. And kind of, and I thought he would like the source material once he found out what it was. Well, remember you, you actually you showed up uh, at the editing room for a uh, spotting session. You walked in with Frank Miller, I said, this is Frank and that Miller. was when I realized. <laughs> uh, right, one, I was like Frank Miller. All right, you know, uh, my assistant editor is, is a gigantic comic book geek, and like it was like one of the happiest days of his life. And I even remember as we go into the room, he was outside in the room. And he's like, what is that? <laughs> It's an exciting thing to try and turn into a film. Honestly, audiences are going to be blown away. Can't wait to see it when it's done. You know, really can't, because uh, I think it's going to be a really special little thing that he's done. In a lot of ways, this movie is quite literally like having a dream come true. Down the right back alley in Sin City, and you can find anything. <laughs>